Okay, if you did not watch the sing-along video yet, pause this video and go back and watch the quadratic formula sing-along because life will be so much easier and more pleasant if you're singing this formula. All right, today we're learning another method to solve quadratic equations, and it's called the quadratic formula. Here it is, okay? So the solution, you guys, to um, of a quadratic equation that looks like this, ax squared plus bx plus c, like we've been talking about, equals zero. And a can't be zero because otherwise you wouldn't have an x squared. So whenever you have an x squared, then you can do it by solving this problem, this, this plugging it in, and you can use your you can use your calculator, but I want you to understand it's negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, the square root of that, all over 2a. I wish I could sing. I can't, so I won't sing to you, but I really want you to watch that video. Okay, so a couple of things you should know about this formula. The stuff that's under the radical, okay, the part there, just that stuff that is b squared minus 4ac, it has a special name. It's called the discriminant. And it, oh goodness, I'm having trouble coloring. It is going to tell you some details, right? It can tell you exactly how many solutions you have. So if you're using this formula and you wind up getting a negative inside the square root, so go ahead and take the calculator if you want to and go, all right, take the square root of any negative number. It tells you there's an error. You cannot take the square root of a negative. So I'm going to do this a little bit backwards. If you ever are getting the b squared minus 4ac is less than 0, b squared minus 4ac, if it's less than 0, if it is ever a negative, then you're not going to be able to solve the quadratic equation because you can't take the square root of a negative. If the stuff inside there is 0, so you're doing this and you have the square root of, goodness, the square root of zero. Well, the square root of zero is just zero. So I'm not adding or subtracting anything. It just goes away. It's like negative b all over 2a. So you're going to get one solution if that happens. So if b squared minus 4ac equals zero, you're going to get one solution. Now, if I get something that turns out to be a number, right, we sing negative b plus or minus, but that means we're going to do the whole equation one time where you're adding whatever that number is and then dividing by this and then one equation the whole time where you're subtracting whatever that number is and all dividing by 2a. So if you ever have the b squared minus 4ac and it is greater than zero, you're basically adding something and subtracting something in the process of getting the formula. So it's going to give you two answers. So we're going to find that discriminant first. We're solving so we know what's coming so we know how many solutions we're going to get. So if we're using the quadratic formula and we're solving this, thing we always want to make sure is that it is equal to zero. We always want it to be set equal to zero. Spell out what a, b, and c are. We're going to calculate what we call the discriminant, right? So discriminant, okay, we'll set an extra syllable there. The b squared minus 4ac, and then we're going to simplify that. Okay, enough talking about it, let's actually do it. Okay, so here's our first problem that we're going to do. All right, so we're going to solve this. It already equals zero. So good. Check it off the box. A is one. B is six and C is eight. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out what B squared minus four times A times C. Now I just write it in parentheses like that because if B is ever negative, it's super important to use that because when you square it, it'll become positive. And if you're not thinking about it and you're just typing in like negative six, it's not negative, but if it were here, then you would get a positive, you would get a negative number in your calculator. So this is gonna be six squared minus four times one times eight. So I'm going to take my calculator and I'm going to go, okay, parentheses, six. I'm going to use the squared button. Okay, minus four times one times eight. And I get positive four. So my discriminant is equal to four. So you're like, okay, that is bigger than zero. So because b squared minus four ac is greater than zero, 
I know I'm going to be getting two answers. So when I do my whole quadratic formula here, I'm going to get two answers. Okay, so now I'm ready to plug this in. So my formula goes like this. I like to write this as negative, and I put the B in parentheses, B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Now, here's the scoop. We just worked really hard, and we got this stuff on the inside of this. We got 4 for that, so that's going to be pretty easy to plug that in. So negative, now what's B? So negative 6 plus or minus the square root of, I got 4 for that, all over 2A. Now, I can, at this point, evaluate that and simplify this by hand. Or I can go to my calculator. I'm going to show you the calculator. So if I do this, I'm going to hit the fraction button so I've got it all in my calculator. Negative, now I can put the 6 in parentheses. It's not going to hurt anything. Plus or minus. There's not a way to type in plus or minus. So I'm going to have to do it once with the plus. Square root of 4. Then I'm going to arrow down 2 times 1. And that's going to give me negative 2. Then I'm going to do it again. I'm going to hit the fraction button. Negative 6 minus the square root of 4. So I'm doing the same exact thing, once with a plus and once with a minus, because that's what plus or minus means. you got to do it two times. All over 2 times 1. And I'm going to get negative 4. So those are my answers. Now let's talk about doing that without the calculator. I've got negative 6 plus or minus. I know the square root of 4 is 2 all over 2. So this is negative 6 plus 2 over 2, and negative 6 minus 2 over 2. So that is negative 4 over 2. So negative 2, hey, same answer as I got here. And it is negative 6 minus 2 is negative 8 over 2, which is negative 4. Again, same answer as I got here. And I'm okay if you're using the calculator because this is scary looking, but I also want you to understand how to simplify it. Okay, that was it. That's the quadratic formula. So now you know what's going to happen? We're just practicing it. So again, this one doesn't equal zero. So I have to move the 15 over. That's what I do first. x squared minus 2x minus 15 is equal to zero. a is 1, b is negative 2, C is negative 15. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find B squared minus 4AC. So I'm going to do B squared minus 4 times A times C. Negative 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 15. Let me go to my calculator. I'm going to say negative 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 15. And I'm going to get 64. So again, I just got another positive answer for what goes inside there. So because that is greater than 0, b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0, I know I'm going to get two answers. Okay. So now i got to plug this in to negative b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac all over. I know, I know, I know. So negative, negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 64, because I just worked so hard to get that, all over 2 times 1. So I can come to my calculator. I can hit the fraction button. Negative, parenthesis, negative 2 plus the square root of 64 all over 2a. And that is going to give me 5. And I could do the same thing. Negative, negative 2, minus the square root of 64, all over 2a. And I get negative 3. Those are my two answers. That's all. Okay? You can continue to do it by hand. I'm just using the calculator to kind of get you used to that as well. Again, first job is to make this equal 0. So I'm going to add 12 to both sides. x squared plus 5x plus 12 equals 0. So, A is 1, B is 5, C is 12. So, I'm going to do my B squared minus 4AC. 5 squared minus 4 times 1 times 12. Okay, 
I'll come to my calculator. 5 squared minus 4 times 1 times 12. Now, I'm getting kind of lazy. I didn't use those parentheses here because it was positive, and I knew I didn't need it. Uh-oh, I get negative 23. I just got a negative number for my discriminant. When you get a negative number for the discriminant, you know there is going to be no real solution. You actually, in Algebra 2, will learn how to solve this getting imaginary solutions. Okay, if you were having a brain freeze and you didn't realize, Jude, my discriminant is negative, what you would have done is negative b plus or minus the square root all over 2a. And you would have come to your calculator and you would be plugging this in and you'd go negative 5 plus the square root of negative 23 all over 2a. And you'd get domain error. You know what that means? No real solution. It means you can't do it. Okay, let's try another one. Now, again, it's equal to zero, so we're okay. So A is 1, B is 3, C is negative 18. B squared minus 4AC. So 3 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 18. I plug that into my calculator, and I'm going to get positive 81. You know what that means? When I get that for my discriminant, it's greater than zero. So that means I'm looking for two answers. I'm getting two answers here. So all right, I'm ready to plug this in. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, which is the 81, all over 2a. And I plug that into my calculator, and I'm going to get negative 3 plus 9, which is positive 6, over 3, over 2, which is 3. Then I'm going to do negative 3 minus 9, which is negative 12, divided by 2 is negative 6. And there it is. There's my two answers. Okay, now, this time, A is not equal to 1. That's okay. So A is 2, B is 7, C is negative 15. B squared minus 4, AC all over, so 7 squared minus 4 times 2 times negative 15. I am going to get positive 169. Now, today I keep getting these really nice um, radicals that are simplifying so beautifully. It's not going to happen forever. Negative b plus or minus the square root. We just worked really hard to get that 169. All over 2 times 2, okay? So the square root of 169 is 13, right? So I worked hard to get that. So it's negative 7 plus or minus 13 over 4. So negative 7 plus 13 over 4 is going to be 8 over 4, which is 2. And negative 7 minus 13 over 4 is going to be negative 20 over 4, which is negative 5. Again, you can go use your calculator or you can work that out by hand. Okay, this example, again, you have to move it over if there's something on the other side because you have to make it equal 0. Remember, that's the first step. You can't do this unless it equals 0. So, oh my goodness. All right, don't be scared. Negative x squared minus 5x minus 2 equals 0. It's fine. A is negative 1. B is negative 5. C is negative 2. Now, in theory, if you wanted to multiply everything by negative 1 and change the signs, mathematically that would be equivalent and you'll get the same answers. But you don't have to stress about that. Right now, we're just going to do this. We've got our A, our B, our C. So we're going to figure out our discriminant. It is going to be negative 5 squared. B squared minus 4. A, C, all over. No, it's not all over. That discriminant. Sorry, I get it carried away with my singing. I'm going to get positive 17, which means, once again, I'm going to get two answers. We didn't do any today where you get one answer. Okay? So if you got the same number twice when you were doing this, um, if you're adding or subtracting, that will be um, one answer. So now I'm ready to plug this in. So I'm like, okay, I've got this. Negative b. So I put the negative and then I put the b. Plus or minus the square root of 
17 all over 2 times negative 1. Now, this is a lot. Negative, negative 5 is a positive 5. Plus or minus the square root of 17 all over negative 2. Now, it's kind of awkward to put this negative in the denominator. So if I put it in the numerator, it's like I just make this negative, the plus or minus would become minus or plus. So it's the same as negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 17 over a positive 2. Now, let me show you what happens with the calculator with this one. If I am plugging this in and I'm using my fraction button, I would be typing this in here, negative, negative 5 plus the square root of 17 all over 2 times negative 1. Now, when I do this, the 17, the, ra the calculator is going to put the radical first. That's okay. So it just changes the order. So, you know, it was like the radical was the minus. So negative radical 17 minus 5. It's the same thing. It's just flipping that around. Okay. And when I do that again, because you, know, you have to do it twice, negative, negative 5 minus the square root of 17 all over 2 times negative 1. It changes it around. It's, it puts the radical first, so it's radical 17 minus 5. So what's changing is the plus or minus that's in front of the radical. So if you're switching the order of these, that's okay. So either way, as long as you have the plus or minus with the square root of 17, Minus your 5 over 2, it means the same thing. Okay, now remember this. Since there's no real number that is the square root of a negative, right? Because we didn't have one of those happen here. The equation is going to have zero solutions. I guess we did have one that happened right here. When I was trying to take the square root of a negative, so I'm just reminding you, sometimes that's going to happen. All right, hope you are doing well day one of the quadratic formula.